Seven years ago, Hurricane Maria, or apologies, uh, Hurricane Sandy knocked out power for 8 million residents in New York and was the largest scale electricity outage due to a natural disaster in the US. Two years ago, Hurricane Maria knocked out power for three and a half million Puerto Ricans for over six months. We deployed our first turnkey solar microgrid in Puerto Rico right after Hurricane Maria. And this year, millions of Californians were out of power with wildfires resulting in the best two months of business for us yet, as well as the largest growth of generator sales in US history. The problem is that grid infrastructure is failing in the face of rapidly increasing climate disasters and microgrids are still too complicated and expensive to sufficiently meet the demand. This has left the market to generators because they're compact, they're rapid to deploy, they're reliable and they're convenient. Caterpillar, Perkins, Agreco are all really enjoying this new outage world. The problem with generators is that they're expensive to operate. They sit useless through most of the year when they're not providing backup power. And when we look at the cause of our rapidly increasing natural disasters, they're a huge source of greenhouse gas emissions as well as carcinogenic toxins. This is why Box Power has developed the first turnkey plug and play solar battery microgrid system that enables non-specialized distributors and contractors to both sell and install advanced renewable energy systems by providing them with both the plug and play hardware as well as the, the software and sales tool financing to streamline the sales process. We're the first US provider of turnkey hybrid solar battery microgrid systems. This is our first product, the solar container, a single 20 foot unit that can provide power up to five full size US homes, but is actually designed for small commercial and critical facilities, such as gas stations, schools, medical centers, critical offices, police stations, etc. And our second product that we released this summer, just in time for the outages, which is our six kilowatt mini box, designed to meet the critical loads of your average sized US home. This is the first fully turnkey hybrid solar battery system available in the US market and is capable of providing power for less than half the cost of diesel generation and providing a customer ROI of less than six years. So what's really this made up of? At our core, we're an advanced technology integrator that takes a complex process and turns it into a convenient product. We integrate a rapidly deployable turnkey solar array that assembles in hours onto the top of our modular shipping container. We have a pre-wired lithium iron phosphate battery storage solution ready to deliver power inside, an advanced bi-directional inverter system that can provide both backup power as well as time of use peak shaving and demand response when the grid is operating, an integrated propane or natural gas generator that ensures that you have the exact same reliability of a generator, but with an 80 to 90% reduction in fuel usage and fuel cost, and a standardized, standardized controls and monitoring interface that simultaneously allows the customer to know exactly how much power is available in their battery bank and how much fuel is in their propane tank, while also giving the utility or the energy service company control of the distributed asset to respond to virtual power plant and demand response energy markets. This has all been made possible by our OEM partners that are all tier one technology providers, including SMA Schneider, Mission Solar, Simplify Batteries, and several others. That's the hardware. But in order to sell these systems, we have to make it easier for the customer because the number one complaint we hear from customers who are looking into microgrids is that the sales process is so confusing. How much is it gonna cost? What are they gonna get? What's the savings return? Because of that, and based on customer feedback, we developed the Easy Energy Audit and System Integration sales software. This incorporates an energy audit platform where we survey the customer on their appliances, their energy usage, their budget, and their energy goals, and spit out a recommended system configuration from our standardized products. It then takes it one step farther 
by integrating with third-party financing providers to provide low-cost, long-term energy-as-a-service financing options that can distribute the cost of the system over 10 to 15 years. So, since launching 18 months ago, we've done over 1 million in realized revenue from 15 deployed microgrid projects. We have a backlog of system orders of approximately 1.5 million and 15 systems deployed, ranging from Puerto Rico, Alaska, Hawaii, and California. Prior to the public safety power shutoffs, we had over $20 million in our project pipeline that we were considering, which has doubled in the last three months to a total of 40 million in our pipeline now. We have four generations of our products, meaning we have gone to the market, received feedback from the customers and the industry, revised and improved our product to provide a truly turnkey microgrid experience. And we're certified for installation in California, Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. This is a little graph of not only the coverage we received in Efficient Gov, Navigant, Homer Energy, Bloomberg, Fast Company, Forbes 30 Under 30, but a little graph of our October and then our later beginning of November outages this year from PG&E resulting in a more than 30x spike in our website traffic and quote requests in the last three months. So I'm sorry for everyone who lost power, but it has been good for business. <laughs> Customers like us because we simplify the microgrid process. We turn a complex and lengthy process into something as simple as buying a car a standardized product with standardized financing terms. From one of our customers in Alaska, Brian Hirsch, who's the owner of Deerstone Consulting, who is one of our distributors in Alaska, saying that we have streamlined the design, procurement, and installation process for solar microgrids in one of the most challenging environments on the earth. We have six of our systems deployed in remote Alaskan communities with no road access where we had to bring them in on barges. Two of our technicians are able to install over 50 kilowatts of power in three days. In Puerto Rico, the community center using our first system has been using it continuously for 18 months. And even though the grid is back up in Puerto Rico, they're still using our system because there's been significantly less downtime than the Puerto Rican grid. And I imagine we'll be seeing a similar trend here in California. The way that we sell this is through an approved network of distributors and installers who we train on both the installation of our hardware as well as our easy sales tool. This gives them all of the design, sale, and financing options for a non-technical non distributor to sell our systems to customers. This is all accomplished through the easy design software, and our customer targets at this point are primarily focused on critical facilities. We're working with Nevada County to power a critical medical facility and others uh, that to maintain operation of the county executive office, as well as small commercial. We're working with a number of grocery stores, targeting gas stations and medical facilities to provide backup to the refrigeration in the event of outages. But just like my friend here went before us, the real financial return is not from the outage itself, although the financial loss due to power outages is not to be dismissed. The Small Business Development Council estimated that small businesses lose an average of three to $6,000 per day of outage when the power goes out. But this return on investment does not incorporate the savings from outages. This is based on the savings generated from the solar array, continuously backfeeding, offsetting their energy demand, and the battery bank, utilizing time of use optimization to shift their energy load from peak hours when energy costs more to off peak hours when it costs less. For our mini box, our residential system, we see an average 10 year return on investment. And for our largest mega box, we see a return on investment for the customer in as little as three years. This was accomplished by myself and my founders, Michelle and Anderson, who come from backgrounds in the solar industry, as well as Bank of America corporate finance. And we're now a full-time team of 15 who have a cumulative about 150 years of experience in the microgrid, off-grid solar and battery design and installation industry. We're currently raising $11 million for our Series A to scale our operations and open a second manufacturing facility to scale our revenue from our current 
projected 2020 revenue of 3.5 million to our projected 2023 revenue of 91 million. The market for this, the energy as a service market for uh, financed energy solutions is estimated to be $87 billion. The existing diesel generator market is a $46 billion per year market made up of $40 billion of fuel expenditures and $6 billion of capital cost. And all of this dwarfed by the rural electrification market, providing power to 1.2 billion people worldwide, appraised at $330 billion which we are approaching sequentially. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited to talk to you all and uh, please hit me with your hardest questions. First of all, Angelo, from our panel, let's start with Brian. Uh, great presentation, really good. Um, two questions on cost. I'm, and if I missed it, I apologize. How much does the big system cost? And then what does that correlate to if you're using it in a microgrid on a cost per kilowatt hour basis, yes. is, what would they be paying for? We typically sell the systems as finance, so the customer never sees the upfront cost and instead see it amortized over 10 or 15 years. But if you're looking at the upfront capital cost of the system with margin, which is what we receive from the financiers, our smallest residential system starts at about 20,000 for a fully turnkey system to power a house. Our largest 25 kilowatt solar container is about 78,000. Um, finance, that comes out to roughly 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So in our sales pitch, what we sell to customers here in California is you're gonna pay 10 to 15% more than your current cost of energy from the utility, but you are guaranteed 100% reliability. Of the million dollars of revenue that you've generated so far, uh, how much was service revenue versus product revenue? Yep. All of it has been upfront sale product revenue. Um, we are not selling ourselves as a service right now. Um, so some of it is finance, but we've received all of it as upfront equipment purchase. And if that was roughly 15, how, how many units, how many units was? 15 units. 15 units. And yep. so if you're going to nine X revenue, then you're going to nine X the number of units in the next 12 months. And so mm -hmm. can you just talk a little bit about uh, the technical training for your technicians um, as you sort of ramp up that um, human capital to, to make sure those installations happen in the next 12 months? Yeah, absolutely. So our training process right now, we've launched so far in Puerto Rico and Alaska where we've trained local solar installers and a construction company to be our licensed installers locally. Our training program is a three-day program where we take the Generally, we joke the technical level of experience required is you have to be able to assemble an IKEA dresser. There's no specialized... So it's not everyone, but it's, uh, you don't have to be an engineer for it. All of the electrical system is pre-wired and the only two points of connection are uh, snap quick connectors of the solar array coming into the container and then your main AC out where you tie into your existing load center panel. That's the only part that does have to be performed by a qualified licensed electrician. Our training program's three days for assembling and installing the system. So far, we've trained two, uh, two companies in Alaska, one a construction company, one a municipal works company. In Puerto Rico, we've trained two solar companies to be our installers. In California, since we have a general contracting license, we have been doing our own installations here, but are currently vetting installation partners in California to scale that up. Uh, scaling manufacturing is another challenge. We are building big boxes here and the space and capital requirements to do that. Um, unfortunately, we're not a software company and we require physical space and money to build things. We currently have a capacity of building about 48 units per year. So we're putting, cranking them out at roughly one unit per week right now. Um, we'll be installing three distinct systems this month, and we hope to double that by the end of the year to reach the 100 unit target for next year. As an integrator, um, what kind of unique IP do you have? Yeah. We do have IP, but it's not what we lean on. We've filed patents on both the hardware of our racking and integration system, as well as the controls and communication integration that allows our generator, battery bank, inverter, 
and outside SCADA control system to all talk to each other. We will continue to develop intellectual property, um, particularly on the software and interconnection side where we see the greatest value. The ability to link multiple of our systems together is the subject of one of our patents and there's currently somewhat limited uh, technology in the space of linking multiple solar battery inverter systems together. Um, primarily though, what's uh, spurring our growth as well as the interest from strategic investors like Shell, Siemens, Agreco, who have all approached us with interest so far, is a combination of the industry expertise that we're collecting data on the performance of these systems, how they work under very load scenarios, as well as the brand recognition and traction we've gotten as a first mover. So there's IP back there, but it's really not what we're leaning on for our growth right now. So in Alaska, we have three of our units linked together, powering about 20 homes. Um, our largest system, it's not designed for residential applications that has been used for them, such in Alaska. It's easy to say it can power five homes, roughly, is generally the power capacity of that unit. But a better and a more accurate one is that's enough power to power critical loads for a small school of 200 students, a 2,000 square foot doctor's office, or your average size gas station mini mart. And those are more the customers that we're targeting with the single container units. Um, the multi-box clusters is where we begin to look more at larger commercial customers as well as, um, <clears throat> as, well as residential, community choice, neighborhood microgrids, et cetera farther down the line. For now, we're focusing on those single, um, both commercial and critical facilities customers for a single box. Exactly. Yep. You have your battery system, your inverter system, as well as your generator and fuel tank all integrated inside. The entire solar array prior to installation is delivered inside the shipping container. So the entire thing is delivered in one box. Once the panels are removed, about a third of the internal space of the container is available uh, or is empty after the solar array is installed. <laughs> no, but you're not the first person who's asked. Um, there's a lot of interest in this for powering electric vehicle charging as a backup system. My question was more on, you said Shell was Yeah, so uh, most of the large oil, gas, and traditional energy are making investments into turnkey and modular infrastructure. Um, for example, uh, Caterpillar bought Pika Energy recently. Um, oh, I've got to go through my comparables list here. Um, not BP. Uh, there's been a long string of investments recently in hybrid and current turnkey solar battery type systems um, as traditional oil and gas players look into the renewable energy industry. Um, so I was just trying to figure out, let's say if you partnered with a company like that, how would you benefit from that? Yeah. Would you create a different business model there? What yeah. Mostly, so those are the companies who are already deploying traditional generation assets all over the world in terms of natural gas diesel generators. Our best partner would be someone who already had that international supply chain logistics and distributor network for us to piggyback off of. So what we benefit from is sales channel. What they benefit from is selling a value added product that incorporates their core asset of a generator. We're open to using their generator systems as a way for them to sell a value added product that will keep them relevant in a renewable shifting market. The reason why I was asking is once you do that, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, is there another way where you can make money out of data or anything like that? Because if they take over, they're pretty much the job. You know, how do you monetize? Yeah, so the data that we collect is very valuable to them. I mean, I imagine in that, uh, in that instance, they would hopefully have bought out the company. I would be less worried about the what they did with it after that. Um, but uh, how I see it remaining relevant is particularly on a large scale, 
as the deployment of these systems reaches some critical mass, the interaction with the utility and the ability to call upon these systems as a aggregated virtual power plant. At that point, it depends less who owns the box and depends more on who has the data and the control SCADA interface to charge and discharge that box on an aggregated grid level. And long term, I see that's where the real value in the data that we're collecting is. Okay, excellent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just on the $11 million rate, is that mostly going to be manufacturing? Is that if manufacturing capacity, or is that, and if so, does that get you through your backlog to be able to cover the growth that you're going to expect by 2020? Yeah, so we're capable of meeting our backlog right now over the next six months with our current manufacturing capacity, that 1.5 million backlog, which is roughly 20 systems we have ordered. At our current production capacity, that's about five months worth of production right now. We are fundraising to increase that. Um, so of this 11 million, about 2 million is being used to set up a second manufacturing facility. They'll effectively triple our capacity, bringing it from 50 units per year to 150 units per year. Another approximately 2 million is going towards R&D and continued uh, product development, specifically looking into expanding our controls and interface capabilities with utility SCADA platforms. Um, and the remainder is split between operating capital um, as well as looking for a revolver to be able to fund the inventory costs of building the system and rapidly expanding our sales team, which is currently three people. So um, split pretty evenly between those four areas. So we design our batteries at max system output capacity. It's only a two hour uh, backup. Now, granted people are very rarely using the max output capacity of the system. Generally power factor utilization rates are 20 to 30%, which gives you a six to eight hour backup on the system capacity, but we provide a hybrid system. So the generator kicks on as soon as the batteries are fully discharged. And the advantage of that over a traditional standalone generator is that the generator comes on for about two hours, charges the batteries to full, and then shuts back off for another six to eight hours, which enables the generator to only run at maximum efficiency. Generators are more efficient when they're running at a high output, a high continuous output, as opposed to a lower sort of spiky output as you turn your air conditioning or lights on and off. So this allows the generator to run at full efficiency and output, charge the battery up, and shut off for another six to eight hours, which allows us to have a much smaller battery bank than a purely solar battery system. I think your question was the ratio. We typically do a two to one battery to inverter and solar capacity. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.